Welcome to another exciting episode of Radio Rama, where I show you how to work on radios and other stuff. These are not radios, these are cats. You know, some of you who've been watching my channel know that I lost my dear elderly peanut who is 21 years old. And so we adopted this, this brother and sister pair, uh, Pickles and Olive. Olive is the girl over here, Pickles is the boy. They're about a year old, and um, the people that had them, as they were fostering them, said that they had them for four months and uh, nobody wanted to adopt them because no one for some reason for reasons I'm, that I don't understand don't like black cats they're superstitious which is ridiculous anyway they've been with us for about three days they're very sweet um, eventually I'll introduce them to the rest of the cats I just wanted them to settle in and um, they are feisty little cats um, we got them some toys to kind of keep them busy uh, but they're very affectionate, they're very sweet, and um, just kind of made made my whole week, really. And uh, we're so glad that they're part of our family. So, now that ugh, got that out of the way, let's go work on some radios. Now, I've already taken it apart, but this is um, a Zenith... I'm like, I can't remember what model it is. Does it have the model somewhere? Model. I think the model's ripped off the tag. Um, someone's been in it before me. The set works. Um, I'm not thrilled about that. It looks like everything's just kind of floating and daisy chained together. And so I, I'm going to. I'm gonna, I need to redo all that, and also the grounding cap, which is this guy here. That is a .05 or .047 rated cap. That's too big. I also have electrical tape wrapped around this resistor. Seeing this is how that is a sand resistor that probably gets quite warm. That's maybe not the best idea. It looks like we do have a, a newer cord, but it's been soldered onto an old section of cord, so that needs to be cinched up. Uh, what do we have here? 68 microfarads? That was probably... Let me take a look and see what the electrolytic on top says. 60 and 20. I don't think I need to have a... Probably put a 47 microfarad cap in place of this one. I'm just going to pretend I didn't see any of this, and I'm going to redo it. Um, the Bakelite is actually in pretty nice condition. Uh, I know this is Bakelite. It's got that Bakelite appearance and texture. There's a lot of people when they get an old radio like this, their first inclination is to go in and scrub it in the sink. And if you do that, you'll take the, the shine and finish off permanently, and you're screwed. So don't do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is replace these two guys with two 47 microfarad 160 volt caps. I'm going to replace this with a safety cap. Uh, I'm going to cinch some of these excessively long leads. And uh, so basically I'm going to recap the recapping job. And um, then we're going to add the oh-so-famous aforementioned uh, audio input feature that's going to allow the user to run their audio through the set if they don't want to listen to the radio and have the ability to just switch that radio signal off and on. So, let's, without further ado, let's start that process. Alright, so here we go. We have neatened up what was there. I mean, I know it doesn't look beautiful, but... See, nothing is uh, wiggling around. Everything is soldered really close together, like all my electrolytics. Their negative leads are going directly to um, the negatives of the floating ground for the original electrolytic can. And, you know, I cinched up these leads so it's a lot tighter. I took the tape off of this resistor. If you have a sand resistor and you've got some wire exposed, it's not going to hurt anything. But wrapping it in tape is going to do the opposite effect. You're going to cause it to actually burn hotter. Um, 
This is the cap I need to replace with this guy. This is an across the line safety cap, 0 .01 rated microfarad. I also, uh, you know, clipped the uh, the stubby old leads from the original uh, line cord and soldered these direct. And I need to replace this cap. This too is a paper cap. It needs to be replaced. So I'll do that and then we're going to test the set to make sure we're still working. I might need to do a little work on this speaker. It looks like this has been heavily patched. Got some cracks in it. You don't want to use hard glue either. You want to use like a rubbery type of flexible material because you want to ensure that that cone still has some free movement. Otherwise, if you put stiff glue on there, like paper glue or whatever, you're going to lose all of your base response and it's going to sound really tinny. <laughs> so, let's do those couple of things and give it a test. Make sure we're still firing on all cylinders. And then it'll be time to install the audio input feature and then polish the case. By the way, it's raining. It's like, holy shit, we haven't seen rain here in forever. I don't think it's rained here since December, end of June. Highly unusual to rain this time of year, but we, we sure as hell need it. I hope this will prevent us having forest fires, even though I doubt it. Um, we're well below our quota. I've actually been using shower water collected in a five-gallon bucket to water the plants. All right. All right, so primary electronics is now completed. Let's make sure it still works, because wouldn't it be sad if it didn't work? Let me go ahead and plug it in. I think it's important not to jinx yourself. If I was to say, of course it'll work, then it wouldn't. But I do see uh, filament here, so at least that part's still working. What is that thing? Christians disagree. Seems like it's alright, but I think it needs to have a realignment. That doesn't sound good at all. By the way, what is this thing here? Is that supposed to be there? It's like it's this friction clip stuck in there. I'm guessing it's supposed to be there. Maybe it's supposed to make the tuning feel more sharp or something. Let's take a look here. What do we have for our IF cans? Bunch of dust down in there. <clears throat> Looks like hex. Hex adjusters. Let me see if I have one of those. Okay, let's see if we can uh, tweak this up a little bit. As I look at Steph Curry and where he's at at this point of his career and what happened in that fourth quarter, he ran out of gas. Like, that's just the point of it, like, the point that we need to, like, truly look at here. He was running miles around the Boston Celtics in the first quarter and really throughout the first half. And part of what happened there in the third quarter of why they were able to score 38 points to Boston's 24 is because of Curry. But when he... When he I think he's got... Really finite adjustment on these. Usually, they're you just tweak them a little bit and they make a huge difference. There's, it's almost like everybody else was looking around. Friend is to be your witness to them, not to be their friend. You can be friendly, you can be friends with them, but your number one priority is to glorify the name of Jesus, and therefore, your witness and my witness in it in the fourth quarter. I take them. You've got company. We are company. And his name is Ed Lewis. This is the show where Ed gets to speak his mind and you get to speak yours. Politics, science, everything's on the table. Because Hooray, more talk shows. A question, and if you're in the listening audience, you try to answer this too, Jay. So thinning uh -huh. air, concerns about thinning hair, what do you think that affects 25, 35% of the women? By the time they hit age 50. Oh, there we go. We're talking about hair loss for women now. Sunday programming on AM is so, is so good, isn't it? Generally, adult women shed about 50 to 100 hairs a day. And look, hair shedding is a part of the natural hair cycle. But Tell me about it. My sink and my shower is always filled up with my wife's hair in the, in the drain. 
keeping outdoors. She says the federal government can be doing even more to help. We would like to see things like the VASH program where... It seems like it's picking up noise. Let me turn the plug around. Sometimes that'll... That's a little better. say they do not have immediate plans to reintroduce indoor... Makes me curious. Is this actually... I wonder why we have this down here. Where's that going to? I think one of the, one of this should be on the ground. That doesn't look like it's on the ground. That could be a problem. Let me uh, do a little switcheroo here. All right, so I was able to tweak it a little bit. There was a kind of a weak 12 AT6, so when I replaced that, my reception improved a little bit, but about as good as it's going to get. What I'm doing now is I'm oiling the front and the back bearings of the tuning condenser. That'll make it turn a little bit easier. And um, maybe I'll even put a little dab of oil on this thingy here so it becomes just a little bit easier to turn. Of course, you don't want to get it on the string. That would suck. Um, just put a little, little bit on there. Oh, yeah, that's already, it already feels a lot better. I'll put just a little bit right here and on the edge here. Oh yeah, it's like smooth as butter now. Kind of do the same thing with the volume controllator. Kind of work it in there. And that feels a lot better now. And what I'm gonna do, and this is strictly up to your OCD tendencies. I happen to be pretty OCD, so I intend to clean the chassis and the tubes. And um, then I'm gonna fill in these little cracks on the edge with some uh, clear silicone glue and then it's time to add the audio input feature all right here we are with uh, audio well going through this isolation transformer I think I jumped the gun on this and I didn't really explain anything <laughs> sometimes I get I don't know I get kind of distracted uh, but what this is, this is an isolation transformer, and all it really translates to technically is that it's it's like a wall wart. The primary side is 110 or 120 in, and the um, output is 12 volts. Now, if you're in Europe or someplace that has 220, it'd be 220 in and probably same thing, 12 volts out. And what this does is where we basically face the primary side of the transformer towards the volume pot, the top and bottom of the volume pot. Bottom being negative, top being incoming IF signal. And then we are, our audio in goes in through the secondary and we split the right and left channels. We put them into either end of a anywhere between a 75 to 100 whatever ohm resistor. Pair those two ends together. That makes it blend into true mono and then we have the negative of our incoming audio going to the other side of the transformer. And what I've done is I've cut the line that went to the first, or actually the second IF transformer. That's the radio signal. No more radio signal. So now I've got the uh, this Bluetooth running through it. Um, so it seems to be working pretty well. I drilled a hole through the cabinet and I filed it down smooth. And then I also glued, made a knot and put glue in either end so it kind of presents this from moving around or chafing or anything. So the only thing left to do is I have this little switch here. I'm going to run a little switch wire between these, this connection here out the back and through the back of the set here. And that way we'll be able to restore the radio signal if the future user decides they want to listen to AM radio, which given what we heard, I don't know if I'd choose to listen to it, but you know, whatever. Different radio in different locations. Okay, so... Now that I've got the electronics more or less buttoned up, I'm going to wax the uh, cabinet. I've got some old-fashioned Carnuba car wax. 
and some old rags, t-shirt stuff. I try not to clean these 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 cases. It looks like maybe someone did a precursory clean because it's 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 kind of clean. I don't even maybe see a little of no. I thought maybe I saw evidence of wax. I just think this is in really clean condition. Anyway, it is humid as hell out here. It rained, as I mentioned. And I went to the grocery store on my bike and I got back and it's just like, Jesus. It's like being in the south where I grew up. So we'll see how far I get into polishing this thing up. I'm not used to sweating like a pig. Oh well. We, we folks here in California like to whine about the dumbest crap, so. Okay, one of the last things I need to do before I put another coat of wax on this, and by the way, it's coming out pretty nice, pretty squeaky clean looking, is the original cardboard back is kind of beat up. The corners are all like dog-eared and everything, and the fact that the original bottom that attached this to those tabs have broken off, so what I've gotten is a bunch of paint sticks, stern sticks, and I just position them on the, the back and I mark it. I'm gonna cut this amount off and then I'll drill holes through it. I've only got three, whatever in the hell they call these things, these, these friction clips. And I'll try to find one more and then we'll be able to have a good secure back. What I'm probably gonna do too is after I stick this whole thing together, I'm gonna take it outside and put some polyurethane on it just to make sure and preserve the paper keep it from deteriorating even more and also add some structural rigidity to it. Well, look at there, that worked out just fine. It's probably better than when it came from the factory. There's more structural rigidity here. Let me see if this will sit flat. Let's see here. Oh, it's perfect. Excellent. So I'll take this back off, soak it in polyurethane, let it dry out there in the sun do a little bit more polishing on the case, then we'll do a final reassembly. All right, one of the last things I'm gonna do is polish up the uh, dowel cover here. It's just a little scratched up and discolored. I'm gonna use my favorite right product of all time, which is Nova's number two. It does a fantastic job on plastics. Meanwhile, the polyurethane has mostly dried on that back cover. It's stiffened up a little bit, plus it looks a little bit better. I'll use one of those four holes there for the switch that goes through the switch wire for the IF signal. And I've already partially reassembled the radio, so that means that after I polish this up, it'll be time for a reassembly, final testing, long-term burn-in. All right, she's done. I got everything polished up and put back together again. Of course, a jet plane's going overhead right where I'm trying to do this. But anyway, it seems to be working quite well. I got my Bluetooth running through the back here. Tears have washed, I love you from the black Anyway, see so we got a good solid back on this thing. Thanks to the stirring sticks. Every time I go to the hardware store these days, I'm like, I always grab a couple of them because they're handy for radio backs. Oh, don't you just love old country music? It's like you lose everything. They said the opposite of a country song, I know that everyone's heard this, is you get your dog back, you get your wife back, you get your trailer back, you get your money back. That's the opposite of a country song. Anyway, good one. Anyway, this one, uh, I've always kind of had a hankering for this kind of uh, model, and I think it turned out quite well. And so it'll be added to our collection of sets to be ready to put on the road. Um, I think we're going to aim for having a show July 3rd which is next month. This this month got rained out, so we were not able to do the local antique show, but we will next month. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be happy to try to answer them or at least make a comment or at least pretend that I know what I'm talking about. But in the meantime, until the next time something across, comes across my workbench, I'll see you guys next time. Adios.